We'll call our meeting to order at this time. Mr. Stoltz, if you would, please call the roll. Earl Gray, Mayor. Here. Jim Childs, Councilman. Here. Craig Crawford, Councilman. Here. Derek Rogers, Councilman. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Paula Stennett. Here. Council Lady Rhonda James. Here. Mayor. Thank you, sir. We do have a quorum for tonight's meeting. Mr. Childs, if you would, please do the invocation. Ms. Stennett, please lead us in the pledge. Honor, sir. Let us pray. Your Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the life we that you have let us have. Thank you for our community. Thank you for each and every person here. Be with us, guide us. Help us make the right decisions for this community and all the citizens. Be with each and every one of us and forgive us when we fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> this time we will set the agenda for tonight's meeting. Ms. Hewn, do you have any additions or deletions or changes? Yes, sir. Two items. Um, one, we request the removal of item number one under ordinances, ordinance number 2021-04. The applicant withdrew the zoning application at this time. And the second item, um, I would like to request that the city manager be, uh, report on the agenda occur after the new business section and before the mayor and council's comments. All righty. Any other changes? No, sir. I'll entertain a motion to approve the changes to agenda. Motion. With ordinance number 2031-04 being stricken at the owner's request. And the other change will be moving city manager's report from its current position between new business and mayor and council comment. Motion. I have a second. Second. Motion by Mr. Child, second by Mr. Crawford. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Agenda is set. We have some guests here tonight. We, uh, I like to see uniforms. <laughs> it was nice to see them all stand up, majority of them saluting. It's, uh, I believe it's Scout Troop number 17. And you guys are mainly from where? Mine, just about all, all four though. Well, good, good. It's glad, to, we're certainly glad to have you here tonight. Uh, get you a little taste of, of how government is is ran and conducted in the in the city that you live in and in the counties that you live in and you know one day it may be one of y'all sitting up here so uh, we're certainly glad to have you and uh, you're welcome to come back anytime you don't even have to come as a group mom and dad are bring you, you want to come on your own we'll just come on we'd love to have you at any time appreciate y'all being here Our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. If members of council had an opportunity to review the minutes from our August 12th meeting, I will entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Ms. James, second by Mr. Childs. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Next item on the agenda, we have a proclamation for National Public Works Week. Ms. Stinnett. Thank you, sir. From the Office of the Mayor, City of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, proclamation, National Public Works Week, May 16 through May 23, 2021. Whereas public works and public utilities services provided in our community are an integral part of our residents' everyday lives and Whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works and public utility systems and programs, such as water, <coughs> sewers, stormwater, streets, highways, public structures and spaces, parks and solid waste collection, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services. 
and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works and public utilities officials and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff the public works and public utilities departments are materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now therefore, I, Earl Gray, Mayor of the City of Fort Oglethorpe, do hereby proclaim the week of May 16 through 23, 2021 as National Public Works Week in the City of Fort Oglethorpe, and I call upon all residents and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and public utilities and to recognize the contributions which public works and public utilities officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Signed, 26th day of April, 2021, Mayor Earl L. Gray. Thank you, Ms. Stinnett. Sir. Next item that is on our agenda is reports, which we moved, but I am going to insert a little something at this time before we move on. You know, as mayor of this city, probably 90% of the complaints I get, or the calls I get, <laughs> are complaints. And that's understandable. We know that when we sign up for this job. But it's certainly good to get one that is showing gratitude and uh, it don't happen often enough especially in law enforcement you know these guys in blue are being bashed all over national news uh, cities are wanting to defund them we got one of the best police departments I think in the south I put them up against anybody and it's good to get a phone call that is a compliment to an officer. And you get plenty of them, you know, you get speeding tickets and they call and say, well, I wasn't doing but 12 miles an hour, you know, why'd they write me a ticket? And, you know, it's, and I'm always the first to tell them, you know, they say, what, can you do anything for me? And I say, yeah, I can tell you exactly where you need to go to pay that ticket. <laughs> so, uh, but it's good when you get a phone call and, and they call the officer's name and uh, they explain the situation that happened where they went above and beyond the call of duty, the line of duty or anything else. I mean, it, it just don't happen. You know, these guys are our friends, you know, and we don't think about them until we need them. But we need them every day. And uh, we're very blessed to have a good department here. And when something like we're going to recognize a couple of them tonight and a couple of the new guys. And for you, you new guys, this, this gentleman needs to be an example to you. If, uh, if y'all go down the same path that he's gone down, you'll be very successful in your career, whether it's here or somewhere else. But I'm not going to embarrass the gentleman by telling you what he did. But the person that made the phone call to me said they would like to just publicly shake his hand and say thank you. So I see the gentleman that made the phone calls in the audience tonight. So at this time, Lieutenant McGrath, would you come up here, please? Sir, if you'd like to come shake his hand. Thank you, sir. Well, I wondered if he was going to miss me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. 
But in case y'all wondered why I kind of changed the agenda up a little bit, I, I requested that he be here. And his response to the chief was, I'm on duty, I can come by for five minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we bumped him up and uh, I put him in there where we did. Thank you, sir, for your service. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is ordinances. Item number one under ordinance was stricken from the record and approved for the agenda. Item number two is the second reading of ordinance number 2021-05. Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 2021-05, annexation and rezoning request be it ordained by the mayor and council of the city of Fort Upthorpe, Georgia, and is hereby ordained by authority thereof, section one, that the following property owned by ERTH LLC and known as MAP. 0010B036 Max Smith Road, portion 47 acres, current zoning C1 County annexed into the city of Fort Overthorpe and rezoned to an R4. Said property is particularly described in Exhibit A attached here to Section 2. If any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect and impair the other parts of this ordinance unless it clearly appears that such other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. This ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by the mayor and council. First reading, 12th day of April, 2021. Second reading, 26th day of April, 2021. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Item number three under ordinances is the second reading of ordinance number 2021-06. Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 2021-06 rezoning be it ordained by the mayor and council of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia and is hereby ordained by authority thereof, section one, that the following property owned by Emerson Russell and known as MAP 0010D 0010A Max Smith Road, current zoning I-1 rezoned to an R-4. Said property is particularly described in Exhibit A attached here to Section 2. If any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect and impair the other parts of this ordinance unless it clearly appears such other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. Section 3. This ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by the Mayor and Council. First reading, 12th day of April, 2021. Second reading, 26th day of April, 2021. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Item number four under ordinances is the second reading of ordinance number 2021-07. Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 2021-07, an ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances, City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, to provide for certain revisions of the Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Article 3, Finance, Section 2.97 to provide for the provisions therein as is authorized by state law to provide for modification to provide for severability to repeal conflicting ordinances or parts thereof to provide for an adoption effective date and for all other purposes allowed by law whereas the duly elected governing authority of the city of fort Oakthorpe, georgia is authorized under article 9 section 2 paragraph 3 of the constitution of the state of georgia the official code of Georgia annotated 36353 and the charter of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia to adopt reasonable ordinances to protect and improve the public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, and whereas the duly elected governing authority of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia is vested in the city council composed of a mayor and five council members, and whereas the city council is desirous of providing for a streamlined and efficient method of procuring budgeted services and materials necessary for the efficient operation of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, and whereas the city council is desirous of allocating and delegating authority to the city manager and department directors to procure services and materials needed by the city of Fort Oakthorpe, when same have already been approved through the budget process and the council approved contracts, and whereas that all ordinances or parts of ordinance in conflict herewith are hereby repealed, and now therefore it is hereby ordained by the governing authority of the city of Fort Oakthorpe that code of ordinances for the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Chapter 2, Article 3, sec Finance Section 2.97, Expenditures, is hereby amended as follows. Old. 
Section 2.97 DIC, cost of materials, supplies, equipment, services, or project is greater than $25,000. Section 2.97 DID, revenue is greater than $25,000. New, Section 2.97 DIC, cost of materials, supplies, equipment, services, or project is greater than $50,000. Section 2.97 DID, revenue is greater than $50,000. Old Section 2.97 D2IE, cost of equipment, services, or project is greater than $25,000. Section 2.97 D2IF, revenue is greater than $25,000. New Section D, Section 2.97 D2IE, cost of material supplies, equipment, services, or project is greater than $50,000. Section 2.97 D2IF, revenue is greater than $50,000. Old, Section 2.97 D3IC, $5,000 to $24,999. The purchasing agent shall obtain goods and services completely through written quotations where cost is $5,000 to $25,000. A minimum of three written quotations re is required unless adequate source supply is not available. New, Section 2.97D, 3IC, $5,000 to $49,999. The purchasing agent shall obtain goods and services completely through written quotations where the cost is $5,000 to $49,999.99. A minimum of three written quotations is required unless adequate source supply is not available. Whereas that if any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect or impair the parts of this ordinance unless it clearly appears that such other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. All sections or parts of sections in conflict with this section are hereby repealed in their entirety. First reading, 12th day of April, 2021. Second reading, 26th day of April, 2021. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stultz. Next item on our agenda is resolutions. Resolution number 2021-03, which is our service delivery strategy. Mr. Stultz. Resolution 2021-03, Mayor and Council for the City of Fort Overthorpe, Service Delivery Strategy Resolution. A resolution of the Mayor and Council for the City of Fort Overthorpe for the purpose of authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Commissioners of Catoosa County, the Mayor and Council for the City of Ringgold, and the Catoosa County Economic Development Authority to adopt the 2021 Service Delivery Strategy update and for all other purposes. Whereas Catoosa County and the municipalities of the City of Fort Oakthorpe and City of Ringo adopted a service delivery strategy pursuant to the requirements set forth by the General Assembly in House Bill 489 codified OCGA Section 367020 with original document was executed in 1999 and amended in 2010 and whereas pursuant to the provisions of OCGA Section 3670-28B, Catoose County and its municipalities are required to review and revise, if necessary, the county's joint service delivery strategy in conjunction with the updates of the comprehensive plan, which must be updated every 10 years, and whereas Catoose County, the City of Fort Ovalo, City of Ringgold, and Catoose County Economic Development Authority have mutually agreed to the services as outlined within the service delivery strategy as updated, and whereas upon its approval and certification, the service delivery strategy shall be submitted to the State of Georgia for review and approval, and whereas the service delivery strategy is deemed to be a vital tool in ensuring that all citizens of the county and its municipalities are provided with necessary public services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the City of Fort Oakthorpe does hereby authorize the entry into an intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Commissioners of Catoosa County, the Mayor and Council of the City of Ringgold, and the Catoosa County Economic Development Authority to adopt the 2021 Service Delivery Strategy updates as presented and authorize the said document to be submitted to the state for review and approval. Passed, adopted, signed, approved, effective this 12th day of April, 2021. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stultz. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. 
have a motion by Mr. Childs, a second by Mr. Crawford. Is there any discussion? Mr. Rogers? Yes. Miss James? Yes. Mr. Crawford? Yes. Miss Stinnett? Yes. Mr. Childs? Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Next item on the agenda is new business. Item number one under new business, proposed approval of payment to the Bitco Workers Compensation Audit Invoice. Ms. Trevelyan. Okay, we want to recommend approving to pay the audit invoice to Bitco in the amount of $13,612. The insurance carrier comes in each year and audits the previous year. And what's causing this increase for last year is because of all of the um, overtime wages we had to pay out for the storm cleanup last year, which made our wages a lot higher. And uh, we'll take this out of the contingency fund for both water, sewer, and general fund. Thank you, Mr. Trevelyan. I have a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second, sir. Motion by Ms. James, second by Ms. Stinnett. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. Item number two under new business, proposed approval to sell condemned and forfeited property, a Ruger 45 caliber ACP pistol with a serial number 8621511. Chief Sewell. Mr. Mayor, Council, I rise before you tonight to recommend approval to sell condemned forfeited property, specifically one Ruger 45 caliber pistol. On February 25th, 2021, the Superior Court of Catoosa County issued a final order of distribution, which is authorizing the sale and distribution of the condemned and forfeited property. Um, this property was originally obtained from a drug arrest that occurred on September 12th, 2020. Uh, this property included one Ruger 45 caliber pistol and $3,805 in cash. Georgia law requires that this item be sold and the proceeds from this case be distributed in accordance with the Superior Court order. We'd recommend the sale of this property. Thank you, Chief Sewell. I have a motion to approve. So moved, sir. Second. second. Motion by Ms. Stinnett, second by Mr. Childs. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item number three, proposed approval to sell condemned and forfeited property. One Smith & Wesson model number SW40F with a serial number of PAK0917, one 2005 Toyota Corolla. Chief Sewell. Mayor, uh, again, we recommend approval of sale of condemned and forfeited property. The one Smith & Wesson uh, SW40F and one 2005 Toyota Corolla. Uh, on January 20th, 2021, Superior Court issued a final order of distribution which authorized the sale and distribution of this condemned and forfeited property, which was obtained from a drug arrest that occurred on December 26, 2019. This property included the Smith & Wesson uh, handgun, 2005 Toyota Corolla, and $1,001 in cash. Georgia law requires these items to be sold and proceeds of this case be distributed according to the Superior Court order. We would recommend that sale. Thank you, Chief Sue. I have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Rogers, second by Mr. Childs. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries unanimous. Item number four, proposed approval to award contract for road resurfacing on various city roads. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, recommend approval to award road resurfacing contract for various city streets to tally construction in the amount of $797,926.88. <clears throat> Previously, the following roads were approved to be resurfaced and milled with striping uh, through the LMIG funding, and that is uh, Edgewood Circle, Greenway Drive, Dogwood Drive, Pinewood Drive, Shamrock Circle, and that those are the roads where we just are completing the waterline project uh, the utility department is and then also Gaddis Drive, Dolores Drive and the west half of the lane circle. The remainder will be roads with the funds left over for uh, the capital projects we selected last year and uh, we will be working on those and uh, the uh, bids went out uh, was open April 19th and 
there was only one bid and it was tally construction to recommend an approval for this payment. Thank you, Mr. Long. Have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Childs, second by Mr. Rogers. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item number five, proposed approval to purchase two expansion joint couplings. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. The Georgia Department of Trans Transportation is replacing the expansion pads underneath the West Chickamauga Creek Bridge on Battlefield Parkway. To prevent damage to the city's force main pipe when the bridge is lifted, the city must add extension couplings to the force main. This will allow the bridge to be lifted and the force main to stay intact and move with the bridge when they, they lift it. And the cost is $8,310. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I have a motion to approve. So moved, sir. Thank Second. You. Motion by Ms. Stinnett, second by Ms. James. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Next item on our agenda is our city manager's report. Ms. Hugh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one housekeeping thing tonight, mosquito spraying begins tomorrow and weather permitting that schedule will correspond to your trash pickup days. Um, the whole city will get sprayed once a week. And now on to the fun stuff. We have some several fun items tonight. Um, first, we're going to honor some local businesses um, who are celebrating some milestones. And we're very glad to have all three of them here tonight. Um, and then we're going to recognize um, some employees, some new and some long term. So let's begin. First, um, I'll hand it over to Mayor Pro Tem Stennett, and she can tell us about the first local business who's celebrating an exciting milestone. Opening in 1991. 30 years in business in the same location on Alamar Street. A wonderful lady who my mother loved dearly and spent plenty of time in her establishment. Known as our favorite hometown jeweler, let us welcome Lisa Edge from Lisa's Gold and Diamonds. Who hadn't been in there? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You young men sitting here on front needs to remember that because not too far from now by looking at most of y'all. Y'all gonna need to go see her. <laughs> All right, well thank you Mayor Pro Tem Stennett and now right. Council Lady James is gonna tell us about our second local business tonight that's celebrating many decades in business in Port Oglethorpe. Okay, we have Gail's Florist. If, if you've been around a little bit longer than others, you know that Gail's was our first business on Battlefield Parkway, one of the first ones. She was formerly at uh, Three Notch Road and Boynton Drive, and after five years in business, she moved over there. And she is our go-to florist here in Fort Oglethorpe and Catoosa County, and we'd like to congratulate her for 45 years. Another reminder, guys, proms, dates, <laughs> go see Gail. All right, uh, thank you, Council Lady James. And now uh, Councilman Crawford is gonna tell us about our third and final business who is closing after decades of business <coughs> in Fort Oglethorpe. Yes, uh, Molly, thank you. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying, you know, many uh, people in their communities, they know their businesses, but very, very rare and on special occasions, communities are known by a business. And then this, uh, that's the way it is with Sears Shoe Store. You can travel across all over the Southeast and tell them you're from Fort Oglethorpe and people will tell you, 
There, that you got a neat little uh, shoe store there that we bought a shoe and they'll take the occasion. And uh, but yes, uh, Mr. Jerry Sears and his family they're closing after more than 50 years here uh, in the city of Fort Oglethorpe. Uh, Mr. Sears' parents started the business in 1939 and they were located on Knight Street, which is now currently Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in Chattanooga, and it was actually a clothing store. They had moved the location many times throughout the years and eventually opened up a shoe store in the square in Lafayette, Georgia. Then later they moved and opened where they currently are in, in 1969. Over the years, the store has expanded several times, growing into the four buildings all the way down basically where they are on uh, Lafayette Road. Um, this Sears shoe store and the Sears family, they, they've helped shoe, uh, put shoes on many families in this community. They also supported many of our local schools, rec departments, and um, other, any way they could help support the community. They provided footwear for many of our city employees, police officers, and former fi uh, firemen. Uh, just a little bit about it, how I can tell, because I was a kid here, and growing up there, it was the coolest thing, you know, some, that would be the best way to separate from my mom and go hide in them little tunnel ways <laughs> down through there. <laughs> but also, uh, Mr. Sears and his parents, they would always uh, have the cool posters. I had probably my first Michael Jordan poster, Dale Murphy poster. They would give them away. Uh, <clears throat> we also, I got my first pair of Reebok pumps in that store. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, first pair of work boots whenever I started uh, out in the trade. Um, bought my rehearsal shoes whenever me and my wife were uh, about to get married for rehearsal dinner. And now currently, we were able to purchase shoes for our kids there. So uh, without any other ado, congratulations on y'all's retirement. Thank you, and this city will always be grateful for y'all's commitment. Thank you. said something about the other two guys there's your prime example as you get older in life if you work hard open your own business you'll be able to retire one day and go to a beautiful place in Florida where Mr. Sears and his lovely wife are going to very shortly mayor I'd like to say I always gave directions from where Sears shoe stores when they call me I'd, I'd say well do you know where Sears shoe store is and then I can tell them wherever to go in the city because they always everybody go. knew where it was at didn't they? Right. yeah Jerry you remember when uh, CD rented upstairs silt test yeah. that was 70 I when I got out of the Navy we, we had to crawl up there every day <laughs> Thank you very much, and thank you to all these businesses thank for investing in our community. Um, it is greatly appreciated. And now we have some staff to recognize. So first, Chief Sewell is here tonight to introduce one of our newest officers in the police department. Chief Sewell. Mr. Mayor, Council, citizens of Fort Oglethorpe, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Officer Carlos Woodruff. Officer Woodruff uh, served proudly and still continues to serve with the Army National Guard. He comes to us by way of uh, Salvation Army. Um, he has uh, graduated the academy on March 26. He's now completed four weeks of training here at the department, and uh, all is very good. All his reports, he's doing well. Um, so, again, I'd like to welcome Mr. Carlos Woodruff to our force. Well. Thank you, Chief. All right, um, as Mayor and Council are aware, we've been doing service awards for um, some of our employees, and tonight we have two long-serving employees to recognize. Um, first up, we're going to have Mike Housley from our Public Utilities Department uh, recognize one of our longest-serving employees, Steve Brown. Mr. Housley? Yes, uh, 
I want to tell y'all a little bit about Mr. Steve Brown. He came to us when he was 18 years old. He drove in the shop in a Firebird that was purple and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve coming, but I, I, it's honored to have served with Steve for 25 years. Not only did Steve come to the city, he came to the city to make it a career. He's educated himself in the water and wastewater field and operator skills at the city. And it's been an honor for him to be here. Steve also comes in day at night. Any night where he's called in, he comes in, he spends a long hours here, and he has served 25 years of his life to this city. And I just want to thank him for doing that. And uh, Mr. Brown, We'd like to present this to you, sir, for your 25 years of service with the city of Fort Oak. He's the reason he's here. He's <laughs> the reason he's been here this long. Thank you. Steve, Steve, did my wife give you a buttermilk pie yet? No, sir, but well, you'll, get, you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. That's the best gift. Thank you. <laughs> that lit up his eyes. <laughs> she was supposed to already done it. Well, I would just like to say I, I enjoy working with Steve, too. Thank you, Steve. You're always just a pleasure to work with. It's, it's always fun, and I'm, I'm glad to know you and glad to work with you. And now, finally, the last thing for, for my report tonight, I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Gray to, prevent our, to present our final service award for the evening. This one's pretty special. Mayor Gray. Thank you, Ms. Hume. You know, it, it's, it's amazing in our town, you know, the businesses that, that we've called up here, one of them 30 years, one of them 45 years, one of them 50 years, 25-year employee over here. Our last council meeting, I think we recognized two that was 20 and a 25 prior to that had two 15s you know when you get employees to to stay around for 15 20 25 years it means you got a city that's doing something right and uh i just like to say thank you to all the employees you know we're very fortunate as a city we we can offer them good jobs good opportunities and it's good for these younger people to see them accepting these awards, seeing that they have been here for 20 years, 25 years. And it just shows what dedication later on in life can do for you. But it also makes us proud as a mayor and council. You know, there's a lot of cities that turn this help over pretty, pretty rapidly. It's kind of rare to have a city that keeps employees 10, 15, 20, 25 years. And it's kind of rare for a town to have businesses that survive for 30 and 35 and 50 years. And it's all because of this great community. That, that's what it's all about. It's what makes it all possible. So thank you to the community and to this great city because y'all are the ones that make it possible. This next one they gave to me because they want to see me cry, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> I, we, we probably really should have put her in there with the businesses because this lady has pretty much run a business for 35 years here and the business she's pretty much ran has been this city hall right here uh she started here in 1986 so is that 35 years when you young guys helped me do the yep. math real quick <laughs> and i've been around this city for going on 16 years and uh, i've seen this lady do everything from clean the restrooms to be the city manager to being the city clerk to being the purchasing manager she's been called on through the years to do a lot of things and i've never seen her not do it number one not say i'll do it but do an excellent job at it she's uh she's been a tremendous asset to this city and it's Miss Carol Murray. Woo! <laughs> 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 
They were right on the way. You can just stay right there if you want to, Carol. I'm not done with you. No, it's not. People that people that don't people that don't know Carol probably don't know this, but she's a chocoholic. Uh -oh. If it's chocolate, she likes it. And uh, unfortunately, the city didn't have enough money. I wanted to buy her a lifetime supply of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but we started pricing that out based on what we see or consume around here on a daily basis. And we realized we couldn't afford that. <laughs> so the the second thing that that she really loves and enjoys is flowers. And uh, we happen to have a little garden. And af after we adjourn here, we're going to go have some refreshments, and y'all can see it. Pretty nice little garden area. Been there for years. It'll get ratty, and Carol will either go out there and do something to it, or she'll make Tim go out there and do something to it. It starts to look bad. Carol's going to make sure somebody does something to it. So I couldn't think of anything to recognize her that's going to be here from now on other than naming that garden the Carol Murray Garden. <laughs> so at this time, I'll entertain a motion from the council to name this garden at City Hall. Make a motion. Second, sir. I didn't even get it all out. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 City Hall now has the Carol Murray City Garden. That, that means so much to me. I'm so honored. Thank you all very much. Very well deserved. Thank you. You through, Miss Yes, sir. You need my hanky? No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is Mayor and Council comments. I guess I've talked enough tonight, other than congratulating again all the businesses and all the employees. Just a, you know, a, a personal thought of gratitude and a thank you to all of y'all. And y'all tired of hearing me speak, so, Mr. Child? Uh, yes, uh, I'm glad Troop 17. Glad to have you here. Uh, it's a lot to learn about municipality government. Uh, probably none of us knew a whole lot until we got involved, and you learn pretty quick. But glad to have you here. Glad to have everybody here. Thank God we have a great police department. I'm a big police fan. Always will be. And uh, I will have your back. We have the best directors, I think, of any small city in Georgia or the country. And we are very fortunate to have all of you. And probably don't show our appreciation enough, but I'm saying it now. Thank you very much to everybody. And for all the awards, Jerry, you're going to be a Florida, Floridian, I guess, permanently, aren't you? <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Gail. So anyway, thank you very much. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Child. Mr. Crawford. I'd just like to say again, thank you to all the businesses, and uh, thank you all. Uh, thanks to the new... Uh, police officers for deciding to serve and looking forward to seeing you guys and like he said all the department heads and Miss Mur Mur Murray thank you <laughs> and congratulations that's it thank you Mr. Crawford Mr. Rogers yeah I just like to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to serve this is such an incredible community and my daughter's in the back she's eight years old and I love her seeing this I love her seeing these folks honored. I love her seeing these these uh, employees honored and um, for their commitment to this uh, to this place. So it's so awesome for us to be able to raise a family here in this community, and we're really thankful for that. And let me just say also, I couldn't support the police more. Love you guys, and you've got our support big time. Um, just wanted to say that as well. So that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Ms. James? Uh, again, welcome and thank you to everyone. And I want to say that Ms. Carroll is a very special lady and it's an honor to know her. <laughs> so true. What will we do with that? That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. James. Ms. Stinnett? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, one of the things that contributes to the longevity of our employees, our businesses, our citizenry is the fact that Fort Oglethorpe is family. Fun. We center around our families. 
and we have a lot of free family opportunities such as this Saturday at 2 p.m. Mountain City Club will be taking on the Lightfoot Club on the polo field for vintage baseball and if you want to see some real entertainment I'm throwing out the first pitch word of warning I do throw like a girl also on May 15th Saturday May 15th at Honor Park we hope to see you there for honoring those who serve. From 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., we will feature Scottish Highlander, the pipes and drums, so I hope you'll enjoy them, and a bell ringing ceremony to honor all the police officers who made the ultimate sacrifice. In Georgia, we have lost 20 officers, so I hope you will be there to honor those individuals. Rolling Thunder will be performing their military service table ceremony. The Vietnam veterans will be posting colors and displaying the killed in action plaques that denote all those lost in, from Dade, Walker, Catoosa, and Whitfield counties. Our keynote address will be Dr. Mary Lambert. She is retired 06, and for those of you who may not know, that's a full bird colonel. She also serves with the United States Department of Public Health and teaches at Vanderbilt. She has a, a very important keynote address to share with us. So May the 15th, Saturday, Honor Park. Hope to see you there and hope to see you this Saturday for Vintage Baseball. That's all, sir. Thank you, Ms. Stinnett. Our next item on the agenda is adjournment. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Crawford, second by Mr. Rogers. Before I call the vote, everyone's invited. If you go right straight through this opening right here, we do have some refreshments in the back. We welcome each and every one of you to come back and share some refreshments with us and talk to the employees that got recognized. Go see Miss Carol's garden. <laughs> All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.